In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Insight, which is a program that we have on the lab computers that lets the teacher machine view and control the student machines. You can find Insight here. It's an owl. And when you click on it, you're going to see any computers that are logged in or turned on. So some of the features that you're going to want to use with Insight. One would just be to go in and view what the kids are doing. You can double click on it and get a full screen view of what they're working on. If I go into view a machine to stop viewing it, I click on the arrow under control and click on stop viewing or remote controlling. One of the things you can do to help the students is demonstrate something using your machine and display the screen from your machine on their machine. To do that, you click on the student machines that you want to demonstrate and go to show. And I always choose full screen so that they see the entire screen that I'm showing. Now everything that I'm doing shows up on their machines. To stop showing, go stop showing teacher screen. And it'll go back to their own screen. If you want the students to work along with you while you're demonstrating, if you click on the machines that you want to demonstrate to and go to show and windowed, it's just going to show your screen in a window like this on their machine. And they can then resize the window and move it around so that they can work on what they're working on at the same time as you're demonstrating it. Another feature that I find very useful is the ability to remote control a student's computer. If I choose, this is computer 14 right here, I'm going to click on remote control. And in this instance, I now have full control of their computer. I can open a program for them. I can open a web browser. I can type in a page for them to go to. It's a great feature, especially when you have younger students or someone's having trouble finding something and you're in the middle of demonstrating, you can just quickly take control of that student's machine and get them to where they need to be. To stop remote controlling a student computer, if you click on the arrow, you can say stop viewing or remote controlling. You can also send control alt delete while you're controlling and that allows you to get into the task manager or to log off of the machine. Another really great feature is the ability to limit where the students can browse on the internet. You can set up a list of available sites that you want them to view or you can set up a list of sites that you want them to not be able to access. So if you go to limit web and configure web limiting, you can add in if you want to allow only certain web addresses to be able to be displayed on all of their screens, you would type in, so for example, if I wanted starfall.com and educationcity.com, I would save this list as a list that I, I have of available um, website configurations. Now, if I check the, these specific machines and go to Limit Web, I'm going to go to Allow List, and only those two that I had selected are now going to be available for the students that are on the machine. So, let's go into this machine and control it. And I'm going to try to open the elementary website links, and I'm going to get this that says only these two sites are allowed so the students can't visit any other sites. It's a really great feature especially when you want to make sure students are only going where they're supposed to be. Another great way to limit the web is to block certain websites from the students. To do this you go to web limit and configure web limiting and I want to block who to math and cool math and I'm going to save that configuration and then I'm going to click on the machines that I want to limit and I'm going to click on block list so now if I go into here and control it as a student if the student goes to the internet and tries to go to who to math 
it will pop up as a blocked website. So that's a great way to control the ability for students to go to websites you don't want them to go to. Another feature that I use often is blanking the screen. So I will select the student machines and if you want to select all machines it's control A and it will select all of them. And if you click on blank screen it's going to blank the students screens so that they can't do anything on the computer. That way you know they have their eyes on you and their full attention is on you. To unblank you just click on it. Now let's say I had a student that was demonstrating something for the class or I wanted to demonstrate using a student machine. To show their screen to everyone else I would click on that machine and show student. Now that machine is going to show up on all of the students machines so whatever that student does all the other students will see. Sometimes when you're working with younger students it's easier to just send files to them right to their desktop for them to open then have them follow the long paths that we have in Windows to get to those files. To send files to a student you click on whatever machines you want to send to and go to administer and send files to student. At the top you're going to click on browse and you'll find the file that you want to send and click open and then if you click on special folder choose student desktop that's going to send it to a new folder that it will recreate on the desktop called insight so when I send this it's now completed so I'm going to finish it now if I go in as this student and take a peek I now have a folder called insight files now the student has that file and they can easily open it and edit it. What's even better, once the students finish the work that's in that and save, you can collect the files back from each student in their Insight folder. You can do this with multiple students at a time. I'm just going to do this one because that's the only one I had set up. If I go to Administer and Collect Files from Students, I'm going to get this pop-up window. So we want the Student Desktop folder. I want the one file that's in there and I'm gonna go and find I'm gonna make a new folder actually in here just for that and I'm gonna say make new folder student files collected and I would put the date and then I would collect the files it's going to grab those files and make a copy into the folder that I specified. Now instead of having to go into the students folders or onto their computer to get their work or having them send it to you, you can just grab it right from their machine. You can send a message to all of the students or one student at a time. I like to do this if a student's getting distracted. Um, it's just a quiet, very private way to let them know to get back on track. If you click on the student's machine and click on message, you can send a message and I usually force the student to read the message. So you could say, please pay attention. And click send. And it's going to pop up right in the center of the student's machine. Likewise, a student can send a message to you if, you have a, if they have a question. If they click on the owl, and it says click here if you have a question for the teacher. Once the student has typed the question, click send. And if I go back here and stop viewing, I will see that this student has a question. The easiest way to go is into details, and I can see the last question from that student that pops up right here. Another function that you can do is you can log students off restart them or shut down their machines. So if you click on a machine and go to I'm gonna bring you back to the view so you can see what's going on. Administer and log off student and I'll say yes I want to proceed. It will begin the, the log off procedure for this machine. And if I wanted to shut this one down I'd go to administer and shut down student 
and yes, and it's going to start shutting that machine down. So those are some of the basic functions that you would use in Insight. There's a couple more advanced, such as running a program on a machine or showing internet history. They're not used very frequently, but if you go through the menus, they're pretty easy to find in here if you do want to use them. And the help menu, there is um, a lot of stuff to get you going. The user's guide is really great. It has a lot of information for you. Thank you, and if you need any help, please ask your building tech integrator or call the help desk at 9036.